Satellite coming down in three, two, one. Go, go, go! Well, there are two banthas down there, but I don't see any... Wait a second. They're sand people, all right? I can see one of them now. I'm going to be honest here, I really don't want to waste my time explaining why El Alamein is a bad map. I have a Worst Maps of Battlefield video for that. And if you've played it in 2042, it's even worse than its 1942 counterpart. The bottom line is this. El Alamein is a super large, super empty three-flag map without relevance. In 1942, it was popular for two reasons. It was an excellent dogfighting and casual flying map which included a B-17, and also that it was a masterclass in spawn camping and trolling. What seemed like 75% of the player base spent each round driving across the vast desert just to snipe runway campers, steal enemy planes, jihad tanks and planes, and get more kills in the enemy main than they ever would fighting for objectives in this nonsensical layout. And yet, here it is in 2042, with reduced planes, a flimsy B-17, and new uncapped protection ruining most of its original enjoyment. It is blatantly obvious why this map isn't popular. The questions I have are, can it be salvaged? Can it be done with minimal effort? And can it actually be reworked in such a way to make it enjoyable? The answer to all these questions is, unbelievably, yes. And going even further, I believe it can be the best vehicle map of 2042. Introducing El Alamein 2023. Take a deep breath, this is going to be a process. Just like our Battle of the Bulge rework, let's start from the beginning. This is the current El Alamein layout. And yep, it's certainly a thing. El Alamein is known for its vast size, but it is truly too much. It was too much in 1942, and it's still too much in 2042. The very first thing we are going to do is redraw the map boundary by cutting out about 20% of the southern portion. This automatically voids the existing sea flag, which won't be used at all anyway. In fact, because this area is not in use, this flag and any assets can be deleted entirely to improve map performance if necessary. This action will right away better focus 64 players in larger groups and make engagements more common. It will also help direct players in the directions we want. One extra note about this new map border. You will notice the yellow sections beyond certain boundaries. Since the map border overall has been scaled down, we will need to provide extra space beyond this border for the jets to maneuver and dogfight. The yellow borders constitute the map boundaries for all jet and helicopter aircraft. This will allow a zone of dogfighting for jets with minimal ground interruption. Next, we need to talk about El Alamein's main bases. Given that these are the most detailed areas on the existing map, Nothing about these bases can really be changed. In order to make the map work, the main bases not only need to be as escapable as possible, we need to make the focus of the battle anywhere but these locations. And this is where we get to the most comprehensive flag layout rework in Battlefield series history. Previously a three-flag map with vast distances in between, my new version of El Alamein would feature seven capturable objectives. Starting at the top left of the map, north of the Russian main, this is the A-point. 
This is a moderately sized flag in the middle of the desert with fortifications surrounding a base of military equipment. This flag would be created by combining the entirety of the northwest base on Stranded with the large hangar found on exposure. Fulfilling a role as the forward military base, it would begin the round pre-captured by the Russian team. If it is possible, I would add a vehicle deployment icon here to allow light transports and tanks to spawn and cut down on the drive distance to nearby flags. However, this vehicle pool icon must be limited to these two vehicle pool types, something that hasn't been done before in 2042, especially with other deployment icons elsewhere. Several tank assets from Stranded complement this purpose as a forward tank base. Next, the existing A flag will now become the B flag. It will also be shifted slightly eastward off of the hill that it currently sits on. It will now lay almost equidistant from each of the main bases. This flag will now serve as a communications array and will be one of the largest on the map not only featuring some of the original map assets, but several of the communications equipment from exposure and orbital, ranging from multiple radar domes, support structures, satellite dishes, and additional construction equipment. The third flag on the map is the new C flag, found directly east of the B flag and only a moderate distance away. This is now the most northeast flag on El Alamein. This is the new village power station, and will center around the majority of the structures seen on the F objective of Flashpoint, including the main office, solar panels, generators, and surrounding support buildings. Like the B flag, the C point radius will also be extremely large, allowing for longer fights and vehicular captures. Between the B and C flags, a massive overhaul will take place and transform this formerly empty wasteland into the most detailed zone of the map. Starting from the C side, a small batch of military structures will be added from the US main base on Arika Harbor, complete with stone walls and an office building. Forming a southern ring will be a cluttering of shipping containers a sizable warehouse and additional construction equipment, a construction site for those said materials, more containers and small hangars, and finally an additional new construction site. Filling in the massive gap in the center will be a large town built using the large asset chunks from Hourglass. This village and the surrounding structures create a zone of substantial cover for players to fight over as they push for either the B or C flag. Before you ask, yes, this visual concept does not take terrain into account too much, and several dunes may need to be adjusted or flattened to complete the area. These two flags and the area between will be a major focus of the updated design. The fourth flag of El Alamein will be the newly placed D flag atop the hills of the significant mountain range. A flag near this location was always needed to cut down on distances between the flags and improve map flow. This flag will lie closer to the Russian main, and as such is to their advantage while not directly being a gimme flag. This flag will feature the map assets from the old German main base and perhaps another radar dish. Ideally, I believe the perfect structure to include here is the old Damavond-esque flag location from the original 128-player breakaway, but parts of this asset might need to be recolored since it was originally a snowy environment. A feature of this flag will be its large capture radius. As there is a limited space atop the mountain, the capture radius will extend down the eastern side, where debris and additional containers will provide cover and details surrounding the hill. Individual pieces of cover here are needed, since the terrain is drastically uneven. At the bottom of the hillside, a small World War II-style bunker and sandbag ring are placed to cap the area, and give this flag a nod to the design of Battlefield 1942's Operation Battleaxe. Downhill to the east and across the desert, the E flag will sit on the vacant B point of the original design. Fleshed out with a few watchtowers, armored HQ buildings, and surrounding sandbox walls, this objective will be a site of major confrontation. The height advantage of the D1 flag 
will allow covering fire for the Russian team to advance on this position. As such, the majority of this flag's design comes from the assets and structures of the Russian main base of Flashpoint. Additionally, while some residual World War II assets may serve to embellish the area, the Flak AA turret should definitely be removed from this location. As tanks and jeeps will no doubt try to cross the desert while attacking the mirrored flag, they will need some obstacles and cover to make the journey more interesting than just a flat open plain. The simplest and most effective change in detail here would be to add several destroyed tank assets, which already exist, in between the D and E objectives, forming a new tank graveyard. This includes both destroyed modern tanks, as well as destroyed Tigers, Panzers, and Shermans. This would effectively communicate that this area has been a massive tank battleground going back a century, and tie into the 1942 origins. These old tank ruins, in addition to a few modern tank carcasses cooking off and producing large flames and smoke pillars, would provide extra protection and cover for infantry crossing the desert and give the map more personality. Further east from the E-Flag, a new objective would be placed north of the US Main near the map border. This is the F-Flag, a gimme point which the US team would begin the round with, pre-captured and with the same vehicle deployment icons and pools, just as the A-Flag is for the Russian team. Built by importing the Sandy Oasis Town Courtyard from Hourglass, and placing sandbag fortifications and destroyed World War II tanks within the area, a largely safe zone is created for both infantry and tanks to fight over. While not a primary flag, which will likely see much action, its position allows for the US team to quickly reinforce the C1 and E1 flags nearby, as well as granting another route out of the base, reducing a base camp scenario. Lastly, flag number 7 is the new G objective. This point is strategically placed on the mountain range just between both main bases and due south of the D flag. Elevated on the hillside and between two merging roads, it would provide a height advantage to watch the surrounding area, including the desert to the east. I would keep this flag of minimal importance and detail. It would serve as a minor fuel depot and consists of minor assets. A fuel refining structure will sit along the hill, while a series of tanks sit along the right side of the road. Between them, a small office building and antenna from discarded fits neatly between the converging paths. Ultimately, while this flag completes the inner trifecta of the D, E, and G points, its purpose is in reality a bonus escape route out of each team's main base and as a pole flag, which is one which exists mostly to pull a few players from each team away from the major battle zones and prevent an overwhelming grind in those sectors. These seven flags would form the new layout of El Alamein. The amount of flags and their positions allow each team a minimum of three direct routes out of their main bases, preventing base camping and creating more dynamic gameplay. Moreover, the three center flags provide for a wholly separate zone of combat and a different style of gameplay than the others. Driven here by longer range rockets, soflams, snipers, and tanks, both standard and railgun, to dominate from the mountain ranges. The outer ring of objectives, A, B, C, and F, will be a more flat battleground, although some cover will exist in the form of the sand dunes and new flag structures. This route, incentivized by granting pre-captured gimme flags to both teams, will provide a standard route for players to clash between the B and C flags and hopefully out of range of the long-range lock-ons of the center sectors. To make the routes clearly identifiable, a new road system will traverse the map from flag to flag originating from the main bases for map clarity. With regard to map detail, there would be two other alterations. First, some of you might be wondering about the routes of the roads out of the US main. Why isn't there another route going directly through the desert toward the E-Flag? Well, we need to consider that this map is not going to be played in 1942, but 2042. And as a result, we need to take account of new mechanics, vehicles, and technologies. Sure, 
The US and Russian mains may not be enterable, but they sure as hell can be fired into. And there are a lot of long-range weapons and tanks which can do this, especially from the high ground positions of the D and G flags. So, as a protective measure, I would create a new mountain range just northwest of the US airfield, starting from the small oasis here and reaching just short of midway between the E and F flags. The terrain type of this range also needs to be precise. You cannot allow Russian tanks and infantry to easily climb the mountain range from the west and shoot into the US main. This side of the hill would need to be much steeper and far more rocky to prevent this. Conversely, the eastern side should be much more of a slope, allowing some US tanks to climb to the summit and provide counterfire at the enemy tanks sitting on the Russian flags of D and G from an equivalent altitude. While it is possible that Russian players may attempt to mountain goat to the top of this range, this should be countered by the easy access the US team has to the top from their side, the amount of new vehicles coming out from their base, the helicopters in the air nearby, the desire for greater kills at other flags, and the locations of the E and G flags, which, if in control of the US team, would have a clear line of sight onto this western ridge. The final alterations I would make to the map is by adding a single flak AA gun from the original El Alamein into each main base. A further substantive change would be to the Russian main. A new mountain range of this scale is unnecessary on this side of the map, and I already believe it to be much more difficult to contain the Russian team in their base. Regardless, as a safeguard, I would add two more of the radio antenna towers found on many 2042 base maps to the inside of the Russian base. In the unlikely event of a strong US team pushing west, the RU team could zipline to the top of these towers and use javelins, soflams, and other tools from a height advantage against the camping US tanks. As we come to the end of the terrain and flag layout restructure, it really needs to be reiterated. This map is still enormous even with cutting out a good chunk of it. Ergo, it is obvious that this new El Alamein must be a vehicle-heavy map. However, I would want this version to avoid the blanket vehicle counts of the current 64 and 128 player 2042 maps, and be more specific to its own map design. This also assists with balancing out the total vehicle budget of the map. Although it is currently not public knowledge what the maximum vehicle count threshold is, we can use Portal's custom editor to see that a maximum of 48 vehicles total is currently allowed. On this version of El Alamein, and using that cap of 48 as a rule, it is ideal that the vehicle pools of each team resemble the following. Two fighter jets, two attack helicopters, one air transport, 6 Heavy Armor, 2 Light Armor, 1 Armored Transport, and 6 Light Transport. There is some explanation needed for these counts. I'll start with the Light Transport count. With many large maps having up to even 8 Light Transports, I decreased it to 6 per team. While I will detail the rest of the vehicle pools in a moment, Part of this decision to limit main base light vehicles is to free up extra transports which can be placed as neutral pre-spawn vehicles at certain flags. These flags being A, B, C, D, E, and F. If the vehicle budget allows for more light transports, the amount from the main base can be increased back to 8, though I would prefer to see them as neutral vehicles on each flag. Two fighter jets per team allows the map to retain its dogfighting 1942 origins. The number of enemy vehicles on the map gives these jets plenty of targets to choose from, and they will also assist with the multiple attack helicopter threat. Lastly, in order to maintain a bit of balance and prevent spawn camping, only one of the two jets per team will spawn on the main base runway. The other will spawn in the air. If this is not possible, both jets should just spawn in the air like any other map, regardless of the pre-existing airfields. Next, we have the two attack helicopter pool, which constitutes attack helicopters, scout helicopters, and stealth helicopters. I settled on two helicopters for two reasons. 
First, these would help keep the tank numbers in check. And second, they themselves would be kept in check by the potential of enemy tanks, jets, and mobile AA. Speaking of mobile AAs, the light armor category should allow for two of either the Wildcat or C-Ram. Allowing for two mobile AAs is reasonable on this map because of its size, and because of the potential of players to configure their Wildcats for anti-armor play and not anti-air. I would also like to see only one air transport on this version of El Alamein due to their current size and map breaking potential. Reducing the count on this pool might also allow for greater tank numbers, which is preferred for the theme of the map. The transport helicopters, as well as the ground armored transports like the MAF, have a negative effect on map gameplay. Each of these vehicles can fit up to six players which means that depending on the round, just two, or a combination of both vehicles renders an entire third of a 32-man team occupying a vehicle seat, and not playing for flags. For this reason, I would only allow one armored ground transport to that group as well. Finally, there is the heavy armor pool, consisting of what I hope would be six tanks per team. Once again, keeping with the history and design of El Alamein, it should remain a tank-heavy map. Part of the reason why I designed the flag layout to slightly favor the US side is because of the potential for multiple railgun tour tanks to sit on the Russian mountain range and wipe out all air and ground vehicles with hitscan-like precision from insane ranges. While not a certainty, I would prefer to be proactive to the threat of coordinating TOR railgun tanks and make the strong recommendation to remove the railgun TOR tank from this map's vehicle pool altogether. Either way, the flag and road designs should keep tanks circulating the layout since the amount of flags on the map cannot be camped from a single position. This is my remastered experience for El Alamein in Battlefield 2042. We have covered the flag layout, the map terrain, points of interest, and legacy immersion, assets to be ported in, and a new vehicle count. This version of the map provides two vastly different zones of combat for alternating styles of gameplay with properly spaced out flags in order to prevent base camps and spread tank battles evenly. The increased objective count and closer distance should prevent it from being too much of a walking simulator. The elevated mountain range near the US main base balances out the verticality of each side, preventing a BF4 Silk Road style turkey shoot. It should in theory provide for a drastically faster paced gameplay experience than its original design, and perhaps one of the best vehicle focused layouts of this game. And there you have it, a completely reworked, rescaled, and re-energized El Alamein for Battlefield 2042. This is El Alamein 2023. As with everything, this is entirely a concept video. All the theory crafting in the world doesn't guarantee a great map design. However, with my experience with Battlefield over 20 plus years and knowledge of Battlefield map design, I feel that this redesign is a major improvement over the original. And what a shocking difference it can be. This concludes this three-part video series of redesigning Battlefield Portal's 1942 maps. Remember that the original objective of this project is ultimately to utilize existing 2042 map assets and improve these two maps enough that they would be successful in the 64 player playlist from the main menu. Indeed, it is very possible that both of these layouts could be integrated into Breakthrough as well. I hope you enjoyed this ambitious experiment. Please let me know what you think. This is Gravity. See you next time on Battlefield Analysis.